Good to you, my actual students and prospective students. This is Jire Onichas, your lecturer, Bachelor of Arts degree program in English. Today we are kickstarting a new course that is Phonology 3. Phonology 3, PHN 201, that is mispronunciation and misspelling implications. Mispronunciation and misspelling implications. We will concentrate first on the mispronunciation implication. And this Mispronunciation Implications session comprises three parts, that is, is in three subdivisions. So we take on the first part today. In English language, there are many words. Many words are mispronounced. They are often mispronounced, especially by the uh, non-native speakers of English language. So we have the first word here, B-A-S-S, -S, B -A -S -S. That word is not pronounced bas, because in English, words that end in A-S-S, -S, we have the A-S-S -S pronounced as as, like pass, class, glass, etc. But this B-A-S-S -S is an exception to the rule. B-A-S-S is pronounced bass, bass, that's musical note, musical note, bass, that's low tone, low tone, musical note, bass, bass, we talk of bass guitar, bass guitar, so not bass. Next is the word S-L-O-U-G-H, S-L-O-U-G-H, that's slow. Slow, if it means marsh, it's a polysemous word, a word that has more than one meaning. Slow, it is pronounced slow, S-L-O-U-G-H. Slow, if it means marsh, swampy ground, wet ground, that's slow. But if the meaning ascribed to it is the cast off skin of snake, cast off skin of snake, then the pronunciation changes to slough, slough. The same, pronunci the same spellings, but different pronunciation this time. Slough, cast off skin of snake. Cast off skin of snake. Slough, then marshy ground. Slough, slough. Next is a word which some people mispronounce. CH in English is pronounced ch, ch, ch. That's voiceless, voiceless. Uh, palato alveolar affricate. That's voiceless palato alveolar affricate. That's an affricate. An affricate is in between plosive and fricative. That is, the first is the, the sign, the symbol. Uh, there are two symbols together. There are two symbols that come you know, to play when we talk of affricates. So this affricate, thus we have the T and the T and the sh coming together. That's plosive and fricative together. So we have ch, ch, ch. But there's a word containing ch, ch, but the pronunciation is different. It's pronounced sh, that's fricative sound, sh, sh, not but it is C H that's machine, machine, M A C H I N E. That is machine. It's pronounced you no know, as S H, but it is C H, machine, not machine. Next is the word S T I P E N D. S T I P E N D is often mispronounced, generally mispronounced, even by the educated literate ones. So that word, S-T-I-P, 
E N D. Not only mispronounced, even the meaning associated as crap to it is also wrong. That word is not stipend, it's stipend. Stipend, not stipend. And the meaning of stipend, people think stipend means uh, just a pittance, pittance, a little money given you know, for drink, stipend. That is insufficient amount of money. They say, I, I received just a stipend. No, stipend doesn't mean that. Stipend is a form of salary, salary. Salary paid to maybe priests, magistrates, and the rest, some professionals. Stipend is a form of salary, not just a pittance, um, little talking. Now, that word is stipend, not stipend. Stipend, not stipend. Then we have uh, this word, uh, simultaneous. Something happening, two or three things happening at the same time. Simultaneous, there are two different the, the pronunciations here. It can be simultaneous or simultaneous. I or E. Simultaneous or simultaneous. Simultaneous or simultaneous. That's that. Then we have a word here. C-O-N-T-U-M-E-L-Y. C-O-N-T-U-M-E-L-Y. That word has three different pronunciations. That's a word that shows disrespect, contempt, disregard, a kind of insult. Thus, we have it as contumely, 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 contumely. But we can also have it as contumely, 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 or contumely, contumely. Contumile or contumile, meaning disrespect or disregard or contempt. So next one is uh, the word uh, hypocrite. 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 Hypocrite, not hypocrite. Some people pronounce it as hypocrite. No, it's hypocrite. He is stretched. So the rest there, that's, uh, the O is sure. Hypocrite. Hypocrite, 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 not hypocrite. Next is uh, we have ACH. ACH mostly, you know, at the beginning of words. ACH is pronounced ach, ach. The CH is also an affricate. Ch, ch. That's voiceless. Palato alveolar affricate. Ch, ach. But in some other environments, the ACH is pronounced ak, k, k. The chi changes to k. So let's try these words. They, you know, they are found in these words. We have arch dicking. Arch dicking. These are words normally found in the church you know, environment. We have arch dicking, not ak. Arch dicking. Arch bishop. Arch bishop. We have a. Arch, uh, well, Archbishop Archdeacon. Then uh, we also have uh, Archdiocese. But in order, we also have Archer. Archer. A R C H E R. That's Archer. A bow man. Bow man. Somebody that shoots uh, bows and arrows. Bow and arrow. That's a bow man or Archer. It's ch -ch -ch. So all, in other environments, we can have that K. K sound. So we can have a archipelago, not a chi, archipelago. That's the area of, of the sea studded with uh, islands. See the number of islands you know, in that area. We call this archipelago. Then we have uh, archives, 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 archaic, archaic. Archaic means old. Old, please don't confuse uh, archaic with uh, obsolete. Because obsolete means no more in use. Something is, that is already in the state of disuse is no more in use, maybe old, too old to be used anymore. That's obsolete. But archaic just means uh, something that is old. It must also be something out of use. But archaic means old. It's like uh, when we have a word, for example, in English language. Uh, 
that is a uh, went went is the present time was the present tense of went in the past when went as we have in send and sent sent and sent so went and went but in the present days went the past tense is still retained but the present tense has changed to go go so that went in a way is already obsolete people don't use it anymore except in a expression like uh, to wend one's way towards somebody. You can wend your way towards me, coming towards me. So that one, that wend as it is used there, it's no more, it's not absolute in that context, but it's a cake, it's an a cake word. So we have that. Next uh, is uh, the word A-L-I-B-I, -I. that's alibi. Alibi, not alibi, alibi. Then for, Fungus is uh, the singular, F-U-N-G-U-S, fungus. But when you have the plural, there are two sounds. You can have fungi or fungi, fungi or fungi. Similarly, we have focus, F-O-C-U-S, focus. The plural is either foci or foci, foci or foci. Foci or foci, these are plural. Then we can also have focuses. Focuses, that's good. Then we, there is a word that is a, there is a word here. Uh, the word hyperbole, 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 hyperbole is a figure of speech. Hyperbole, not hyperbole. Some Literature teachers pronounce this as hyperbole. It's not hyperbole, it's hyperbole. Hyperbole, the rest vowels after hyper, they are sure. Hyperbole, thus exaggeration pushed you know, beyond the possibility. When you exaggerate, you inflate your language. But when it becomes hyperbole, the exaggeration you know, is not a possible one. It has gone beyond the possibility. Example, I could say, the old class attended my birthday party. The old class attended my birthday party. That's possible, but it's an exaggeration. They may not likely be, all, all of them might not, might not have come. There may be two or three of them absent. But this is a way of overstatement, exaggeration. The old class attended my birthday party. But there is a case where we can have something like the old world attended my birthday party. This one is an impossibility. The old world is just to show the amount of people that came. The old world attended my birthday party is an impossibility. That's a, it's an example of hyperbole. Hyperbole, not hyperbole. Hyperbole, not hyperbole. Next. Uh, can have the word, this word, E-P-I-T-O-M-E, E-P-I-T-O-M-E. It's not epitome. People pronounce it as epitome. It's epitome. 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 That's kind of an uh, example, a typical, typical type of something, a typical uh, example, a representation. No, a representation, a type. Epitome, epitome. See, we have that. Uh, next is uh, we have the word uh, B O N E F I D E. B O N E F I D. There are two pronunciations for this. B O N B O N E B O N E F I D E can be bona fide. Bonafide, that means the ball is stretched. Bonafide, bonafide. But if the original, that is the original uh, pronunciation from the, you know, uh, the original language, because that word is borrowed, is borrowed into English. So if we are going to the original language, then we can have a bonafide, bonafide. Bonafide, bonafide, 
but we also be bona fide. That one has been anglicized. We have now used the English you know, uh, sound system to pronounce that. So we have bona fide and bona fide. Next is the word P-O-L-I-C-E. P-O-L-I-C-E. That's police, not police. That O is sure. It's police, 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 not police. Then the word medicine is not medicine. The I after D there is sure. At times, you may dispense with that sound, you know, altogether. We can have medicine, 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 or medicine, 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 or medicine, medicine. Then the word W O L F. That word is not wolf. W O L F. It's wolf. That word is wolf. Wolf, not wolf. Next, W A L K. W A L K. That's walk. 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 The L is silent. You don't pronounce the L. It's not walk. No, 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 no. It's walk. Next is uh, M A G I. That word, the singular is Magos. Magos, that's magician or wise man of old. But the plural now is M A G I, not Magi. It's not Magi. It's Magi. Magi. That word is pronounced Magi. Next is the word G E A R. G E A R. It's not G. It's G. Although, you know, in English language, there's a rule that you know, st you know, states that when G is followed by E, I, or Y, the G must be pronounced as G, G, G. That's Africate. Voiced. That's voiced Africate. Palato alveolar Africate. G, 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 G. But when followed by, when G followed by A, O, or U, that is a plosive sound. That's vela plosive. G, 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 G. So in this case, G, you may say G, G, A, R. G is followed by E. We may be tempted to pronounce G. It's not G, it's an exception. It's G, G, G. That's G, G. So thank you. Let's you know, round off here. So next time we'll take on the part two. That's part two of this you know, particular course. Please try and like this video. Please, it's important. The whole world we come to know what we stand for when it comes to the teaching, to teaching of English language. So please try to like, like, this, like this video, share it, please. Share and subscribe to this channel. Then if you want to know more about the program, that is the course, the details, that is cost implication and some other you know, details about this, you can join our group on Facebook. Join our group on Facebook. That's JC Training Concepts. JC Training Concepts. You see everything. But when you access the group, you just go straight, you scroll down to Introduction 1, Introductory Lecture 1, Introduction 1. You see all the details there. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you.